Okay, first we're going to learn how to simplify this. So you think to yourself, what two numbers multiply to make 75? We're going to find out all the prime numbers that multiply together to make 75. Prime numbers are numbers that are only divisible by one in itself to produce an integer as a result. All right, so here we go. So let's say it's 25 times 3. 3 is a prime number. Then 5, 5, and we are done. These three prime numbers, when multiplied, make 75. So the square root of 5, 5, 3. So the way you simplify this is if there's a double, okay, if there's a double, it ends up as one number on the outside. So now we have a 5 on the outside and a 3 on the inside. All right, now we're doing 96. Let's think of numbers that multiply to make 96. So I'd say 2 times 48. Then you could do 8 times 6. Both of those split. Then we can do... 4 times 2, and 3 times 2, and then 2 times 2, and now we have all of them. There's a lot of prime numbers. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2s. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a 3. So this pair becomes 1, 2 outside. So there it is. Now this pair becomes another 2 on the outside, and we're left with a 2 and a 3 on the inside. Now, if there are more than one number on the outside, you have to multiply them, causing this to be 4. If there are more than one number inside, you also have to multiply them, causing it to be 6. And that's the simplified version of the square root of 96. Now, let's square something that's already been simplified. So, the three is gonna get squared, causing it to be a nine. And then the square root of five is gonna get squared. And because they cancel, it just has the five come down. So then the answer is 45 to this being squared. Right, what about this? Okay, well, seven squared is 49. And the square root of 2 squared is going to be 2. So there we go. Multiply that, and we're going to get 40 plus 40, that's 80, plus 18, that's 98. There we go. Okay, I was about to say, is it the same as the first one? No, that was 96. Okay, now we're going to talk about Pythagorean's theorem. Now, when you have a right triangle... Pythagorean's theorem will work on it, right? If you do the reverse of that statement, if Pythagorean's theorem works, it's a right triangle. So we're going to check with this one if it makes a right triangle. So I'm going to square all the sides. I have 81 is the square of 9, 196 is the square of 14, and 225 is the square of um, 14. So let's check. So do these two add up to the third side, the largest side? This is going to be way too big, so this is a no. So is this a right triangle? No. Let's check this one, 3, 5, 7. So 3 squared is 9, 5 squared is 25, and 7 squared is 49. If I add these up, I'm going to get 34. Does that equal 49? No, it does not. They have to be equal for you to write yes, okay? This proves that it's not a right triangle because Pythagorean's theorem works on right triangles. Now, this one here. So we're going to do the right triangle here, so Pythagorean's theorem, and we're going to figure out what x is. Then we're going to use x with this new right triangle so that we can figure out what y is. So we're gonna use every number, but we're gonna use these numbers first. 
So five squared, so five squared plus two squared is gonna equal that x squared, causing us to be 25 plus four equals x squared. So 29 equals x squared. And now the square root of 29 is your result for x. So now I know that this one is the square root of 29. So now, now we're gonna do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So the square root of 29 squared plus eight squared equals the y. So I wrote c squared, but that's the y right there. So that's gonna, this is gonna cancel and make 29. This is gonna make 64. And then this is gonna be c squared. So we're gonna add these, so that's going to be 84, 93. So 93 equals c squared, square root, y equals the square root of 93. Because once you square root this side, they cancel. And that's it.